Thank you. Hi, Secretary. Thank you for doing this. Um, it was a momentous week here, but there's a lot going on at home, so I have a few questions mm -hmm. for you. Um, bear with me. Um, in terms of what happened here, obviously you said that NATO has become stronger this week with Finland joining, but how tangibly will Ukraine benefit from Finland joining NATO? And then my second two questions have to do with what is happening at home. Um, first, President Tsai of Taiwan is meeting with Speaker McCarthy today in California. Do you support this meeting at this time? And how concerned are you about China already vowing that it will retaliate? And then my second question has to do with politics at home. Yesterday, the world watched as former President Trump was arrested. He's now the first current or former president to face criminal charges, and he's running for re-election to be president. Have any of your allies asked you about this while you've been here at NATO? And what's your response to revived concerns among allies that many of us have heard about the long-term reliability of the United States, given the polarized nature of politics at home? Mm. Thank you. Um, Kylie, la last question first. Um, as you know well, I don't do I don't do politics. I can tell you, though, that uh, the question you raised uh, about uh, the um, proceedings in, in New York actually did not come up in my conversations with uh, NATO colleagues, nor did I get questions about uh, the uh, durability of our, uh, of our approach. I think people are very focused on what we're actually doing. Uh, and what we're doing is a lot, including what I just went through uh, in terms of the um, outcomes from this ministerial, the preparations for the Leader Summit uh, in Vilnius, the intense focus on everything we're doing to support Ukraine, to implement the new strategic concept for NATO. Uh, that's what everyone was talking about and focused on. And also, as I mentioned, the fact that we have the, the growing engagement between NATO and other partners, to include our partners from the Indo-Pacific, to include the European Union. Its high representative was here as well uh, today. That was the entirety of the, uh, the conversation and, uh, and our focus. Um, in terms of uh, Finland's membership in, in NATO and, uh, and Ukraine, um, look, in the first instance, irrespective of, the, of that question, as I've detailed uh, at, at some length, uh, a big focus of our meetings here over the last day, day and a half was on, uh, on Ukraine and the support that um, virtually every NATO member is providing individually, as well as the support that NATO institutionally is providing, both uh, in the immediate and also looking toward the, um, the Vilnius summit. I mentioned a moment ago um, work that the alliance uh, looks to do to help continue to bring Ukraine up to NATO standards, NATO interoperability. Uh, and I think that's something you'll see featured uh, at, the, um, uh, at the Leader Summit. Finland's um, membership in NATO uh, does two things. It, uh, as I've said, makes Finland safer because one of the things that resulted from Russia's aggression against Ukraine was deep and growing concern among a number of countries that they could be next. And um, that created what I think is truly a historic sea change in both Finland and Sweden seeking membership in NATO and thus seeking to benefit from its uh, Article 5 um, guarantees. Uh, so Finland now benefits from that. But Finland also makes the alliance as a whole stronger. And that's important in and of itself. I think it uh, may have some additional <laughs> benefits in the sense that um, to the extent Russia thinks about um, expanding or broadening its aggression. Uh, the deterrent that NATO poses to that has now become even stronger. Uh, NATO is a defensive alliance. It's not uh, seeking to uh, engage in conflict with Russia, uh, but it's a defensive alliance that has to have a strong deterrent precisely because we want to make sure that countries think twice, think three times, and then don't engage in, in aggression. And I think Finland will as membership in the alliance adds to uh, NATO's deterrent strength and, if necessary, its defensive strength. Um, with regard to President Tsai's transit of, uh, of the United States, um, 
I think the first thing to emphasize is that these um, transits by high-level uh, Taiwanese authorities are nothing new. Um, they're private, they're unofficial, but they've been going on for years, and uh, President Tsai and uh, her predecessors uh, have, uh, have done the same thing. Uh, in fact, every Taiwan president has um, transited the United States uh, at one point uh, or another. Um, the uh, meetings, the uh, engagements that the president has also are very much in line with, uh, with precedent. And similarly, our own approach to Taiwan has remained very consistent and unchanged, including our adherence to the One China policy, uh, guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three communiques, the six assurances, our opposition to any unilateral changes in the status quo by, by either side. So it's a long way of saying that um, given that, Beijing should not use the transits as a, an excuse to take any actions, to ratchet up tensions, uh, to um, further push at uh, changing the status quo. Um, and our, our objective remains the same, to have peace, to have stability uh, across the Taiwan Strait, uh, and to ensure that any differences that exist between um, mainland and uh, Taiwan are resolved uh, peacefully.